Hi, I'm going to show you very quickly how to make a DHT22 temperature sensor with a Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's a uh, digital temperature and humidity sensor. Very nice little thing here, very simple, quite reliable, very cheap. See it's got a uh, block of acrylic around the bottom. What we've done is we've encased the, uh, the pins and the wires in that and you can maybe just about see it, there's a resistor in there as well. That's very important. That um, the pull up resistor connects the power and the signal, and that um, sets a reference voltage so the Raspberry Pi can actually read the value from this uh, the digital signal this creates. So it's a very simple thing to work with. Need a bit of wire, three cores because we only use three of the pins on the sensor. You, of course. Need these, one of these, a uh, DHT22 digital sensor. Uh, very cheap on eBay, Amazon, uh, Adafruit. We also need a resistor. Here we've got the resistor, it's a 4.7k resistor, and you can see the colour bands yellow, violet, red, gold them here, yellow, violet, red, gold. shouldn't need to worry about that of course if you just buy a uh, 4.7k resistor. Of course normally they don't sell them singularly. You have to buy them on a strip, about 100 at a time. But uh, they're a very common resistor so they are very useful. You're going to be playing with a lot of electronics. So the DHT sensor you can see has four pins. We actually only need three of them. We need the live and the earth to make the circuit, and we need the signal pin. So normally that will tell us on here somewhere. Um, well, actually normally it won't tell us on here. It should tell us, but obviously most of the time they don't bother. They just use a standard um, layout. If you look at it from the top with the grid facing you, the first one is the live, and the one next to it is the signal. So those are the two that we're going to need to join with our resistor. Now you can do this either end of the wire obviously. Um, I find it much easier to do this end of the wire because then the other end you can separate them to plug them into different bits very easily. You don't have any uh, tangle or issue there. And it's just nice and simple. Um, so yeah, these two pins you want to solder. And this far one on the outside is the um, uh, um, so, so we don't actually need this middle pin here that I've bent back and uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to chop that one off just to give us a little bit more room when we're soldering. It doesn't need to be perfect but uh, as you can see it's just giving us a little bit of room to bend the extra pin so we've got a little bit more space when we're soldering. You might not need it, it's good to have it just in case. So, we might as well start with the hardest pin, which is obviously the middle pin. You're going to need to connect that with a resistor. So, now it's just got a nice long wire here. You want to trim this down, not all the way, but just so it's a little bit neater. You can see that there. Uh, just give us a little bit of room. You also, of course, need your wire. You see, we've got the three strands here. Just want to strip them. Just carefully score the edges with the scissors. And you should be able to just pull away the end there. So we've got the three of these all stripped. What I do is take hold of them, just give them a twist. Nice gentle twist, you don't need to go overboard, but you want to make sure all these little wires that are sticking out just 
held together into a tail that's nice and easy to work with. DHT here, the three pins are it. We've got this cut down a bit. What we're going to do, I'm going to hold the wire next to the leg of the resistor and just wrap it round. Nice. Gently. And see. Resistor and the wire there held together. Grip the resistor in our helping hands. I'm just got those uh, thumbs up nicely. So, uh, this together. As you can see, my soldering iron here is, I've got it on quite hot because I'm heating up three different bits of metal and none of them are uh, very fragile. So, uh, Making sure I clean and tip my soldering iron. Making sure it's all nice and ready to work with. And I just want to gently heat up that wire. A little bit of solder splodge between the two of them. Make that connection. As they both heat up, solder will flow between them, making a nice solid bond clinging to both of them. And it looks like it's supposed to. Yeah. Let it cool down for a bit. Very important to let it cool down. It doesn't take very long, but um, you've got to let everything set in place before you start fiddling with it, or you risk the, op the possibility of cracking the solder joint right where it connects to the other metal, which can obviously cause intermittent problems. But that's probably more than enough time. This out. Right, a little tag. Check it's clean. There you go, it's just nice and simple. So now what we can do, we've got this hanging down here. You want to bend it up. And we'll all fit a lot of the time. You have to do something a bit like this. So sometimes I don't even really trim that other leg. If I think what I did with this, I left that first one a little bit too long. But it's fine, it doesn't, it's not a problem. These will uh, match up nicely. Of course, what we need to do is get this red wire around here. Do what we did before, wrapping it around. It's very important to get this connection near where the pin is, so there's a nice, good connection there. And we can pop this back in our Helping hands. There you go, got everything nicely lined up again. Make sure we're all good. That's going around tipped. Okay, 
careful to give yourself room around your toes. Make sure that you hold them together. And a little dab of solder in there to make that connection. And you should be able to just add a little solder where you need it to that little hot thing. You don't want to make too much of a plot, but you want to make sure there's a nice strong connection. This last pin, much easier because you've only got one wire attached. If you want to do what I've done there, you can just wrap the wire around it carefully. Remember, we've still got to be careful of that little tail of the last pin. We don't want anything touching that. Uh, yes, I could probably. There you go. I'll just let that cool. There you go. It's uh, let's find our connectors here. All soldered together. We've got that resistor in place. Obviously, need to think about the other side of the wire. I just uh, trimmed this down so it's uh, about the right length that I need. And uh, again, I'm just going to gently cut around and go through the top of that sheet. A couple of bends. A little bend, you can pull that off. Give it a quick check, it hasn't broken anything. We're all good. And uh, depends how you're going to be connecting this to the um, to the pie. If you're using the uh, Easy Connect or something like that, which gives you screw terminals. Very cool little device. I really like it. Prototyping. And you just need to expose a little end like that. And just maybe give it a little twist. Very short. And then you can poke that in. But uh, if you're planning on using... Just plugging straight into the GPIO. And you might want to do something a little bit different. You might want to connect um, the pong connectors. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing that. One of them is to uh, buy the connectors in two parts. I don't think I have any left, I'm afraid, at the moment to demonstrate. But you put a little pin around there and then use one of these things which is a uh, ratcheting connector crimper you put it in there you put the wire in you line them up you crimp it just right and then it's wonky anyway so that's a very awkward and difficult way these are expensive and not very good. So, an actually much easier way is just to get one of these. <laughs> See that there? It's a, uh, just a simple um, jumper wire for a Raspberry Pi. What you'd need to do is that. Just Cut it in half, bare this wire here, and uh, so to uh, attach this is quite simple. You just uh, hold the wires together, just twist them around each other. A nice mechanical bond. Hold them together nicely. You just
very simple connection to make. The wires are already held together. We don't need to worry too much about that. Now we've got a DHT22 wired with the resistor and the cable. We can plug it into the Pi. It's quite simple. We've got the ground wire going into the ground block, the 3.3 connected to the 3.3, and the signal here I've just plugged into pin 24. Plug it into any GPO pin that's free. Here we've uh, got the Pi ground already set up and connected to the internet. So we just need to Figure DHT22. So we'll set this up to 24. We can test that. Appears to be working. 23 degrees feels about right. 48 humidity, that's about right. Here you see it says device control check DHT.py not set. So what we need to do. We can just save that setting there. We need to go into the cron menu here and add a new cron job. Right, start up scripts. Right, check DHT. Run that running on startup. So, make sure it's enabled. So add it in there. Update cron. It's all good. Now when we go back to here, DHT, it still says not set. Does it say not set? Oh, so we need to refresh. Now it says active. Device control check the HDL by active. Literally control switching of device relays. Heater, humid, dehumid. So what this is offering us is the option to control these devices using uh, temperature or humidity settings. Maybe we want to just control their uh, humidity uh, manually by setting it on and off with timing so we can just turn that off fans control this here you've got manual heater humid and dehumid the heater is the one that I usually use and what this does is if the temperature rises beyond a certain point the high point it will turn on the fans and extract the air. There are cooling fans. I also often use um, air movement fans which I don't link here. They're just plugged in with the lights so they're on whenever the lights are on. But these are just an extra bit of cooling. If you want to extract too much humidity from uh, the box then you can connect it to the humid. If you want to um, try and pull more humidity into the box, you connect it to the dehumid. And these are the temperatures here. So if the temperature exceeds 25 degrees, the fans will come on. If it goes below 20 degrees, the heater will come on. Whereas if we were controlling it with the um, humidifier, it would be when the humidity gets above 60, the fans come on, pull some of it out. When it goes below 30, the humidifier turns on and uh, increases the humidity. 
and we're logging every 60 seconds. Now this is not just logging, it's how frequently it turns these devices that you've selected to use here on and off. So 60 seconds means that the heater will be on for a minute before checking again. Um, 600 seconds obviously, it's 10 minutes, that can be a good one to use because it will give um, a bit of time. It's entirely up to you how you use this and this is just the path to the log on the Pi. So we can agree that. It will uh, ask us if we're sure we are. And there you go. We should now start reading the sensors. So if we look at um, our timing we see that this is active, so we should be building up a log with a uh, temperature reading every 10 minutes and every 10 minutes it will decide whether or not to turn off the heater, humidifier, dehumidifier, etc. So very simple, nice and effective, hope that helps you get it all set up. So, to view that data, we want to make a graph. Go to the Graphs tab. At the moment, your best options to make it on the pie, or your only option to make it on the pie graph. Just select Temp Graph. You can just press gra Make Graph. Or you can look at the options we've got. Take a moment, because it's actually reading it off the pie itself. And here are... Uh, one of the options. I want to limit it to the last 24 hours. You can just put that in there. Make a graph. You see down at the bottom here, it says it's running the script on the Pi. And this takes quite a while sometimes, but there you go, it's actually pretty quick. Most recent temperature 23 degrees C. Log contains 8,000 lines using 21 temperatures because we're only showing the last day. And you see it's making all of these graphs. You click that and it'll download them. That's our temperature graph for the last 24 hours. This is looking pretty good. We haven't had any dangerously hot or cold temperatures yet today. So obviously neither of these show. Very cool. Very handy. One last little note. If you want to use an auxiliary DHT22 just for logging um, the temperatures and you can do that by just calling this job here, log auxiliary DHT22 into a repeating job, point out the GPIO you want by putting in GPIO equals whatever the number is, then space and the log that you want to write it to. Nice and simple. Obviously the um, GUI is a work in progress. We're going to be doing a lot of work to it soon, especially this bit of information here, the DHT22 sensor, tells you everything that's going on. We're going to make that a lot prettier soon, hopefully, and a lot more useful. So, good luck with your sensors.